So as we know, solid organ transplant recipients uh, take significant um, medications that suppress the immune system so they don't reject their organ, but that also put them at somewhat higher risk for developing infection. In the winter months, we worry a lot about influenza and other respiratory viruses causing uh, disease, which can be uh, potentially life-threatening in transplant recipients. Yes, so transplant um, patients should um, certainly get flu shots. We um, at the Massachusetts General Hospital recommend that all transplant recipients who are at least three months after solid organ transplant do get their flu shots done on a regular um, basis, in other words, usually every fall. Um, anyone who has a severe allergy to influenza vaccine or has a history of Guillain-Barre disease should not get one. Also, if people are in periods where maybe they've had recent organ rejection, they may not um, want to get their flu shot at that time and should probably talk to their physician. But I think that overall we are um, strongly recommending them for all recipients. It's important to realize that all transplant patients as well as their close family members and other people living in the home should all be getting the injectable form of um, the flu shot. Uh, they should not be getting the flu mist or the um, nasal uh, live viral vaccine, as that could potentially be dangerous for immunocompromised transplant recipients. So there are many things um, that people can do to avoid infection uh, from influenza and all the other respiratory viruses that are common in the winter time. Um, perhaps the most important thing is, as we all know, hand washing on a very regular basis. It's important to realize that people can eliminate uh, or significantly decrease the risk of respiratory viruses both with a hand wash with um, uh, warm water and soap, but also the um, alcohol-based hand cleansers can really provide a significant amount of um, hand cleanliness and can often be used in places where you don't have available running water. Um, so I do recommend that transplant patients have these with them. Um, uh, much of the time, maybe in a um, backpack or a pocketbook for ready use, and they can be really helpful at preventing infection. Other things people can do are, um, you know, avoiding uh, crowded situations, um, high density public transportation, shopping malls um, during the holidays, um, other times that things are really crowded because they really can increase the risk of exposure to respiratory viruses. Some transplant patients, especially in the first few months after transplant, also may decide to wear masks in public places in case people are coughing on them and sneezing and um, whatnot, and that can also provide an additional level of safety. It's also important to avoid people who are actively sick. Um, sometimes wearing a mask in public means that people who have a cold or a sniffle may not come as close to you or embrace you and may not be um, as likely to transmit a viral infection to you if you are wearing a mask. Also, in the first few months after transplant, we would ask that anyone who's sick not come to your home. Um, if, they, if you must see them for some reason, it's important to sort of distance yourself from them to avoid respiratory droplets and, and such, and also to wash your hands um, quite thoroughly after, um, after seeing them. When should you call your doctor? So that's a good um, question. In general, we think that any significant uh, signs or symptoms of um, infection in transplant patients sh uh, should be, um, uh, it could be important, and the transplant center should be notified of these. Um, things like a s uh, significant sore throat, especially if it's gone on for a few days, muscle aches, fever, which we count as anything as um, 100.5 degrees or greater, ongoing uh, cough, cold symptoms, uh, especially during the influenza season, it would be um, very prudent to uh, notify your transplant center and discuss this with them. They may wish to do further diagnostic assays, including things like an, a swab for influenza. We can also diagnose a variety of respiratory um, viruses these days, and that can be helpful in transplant patients so we know what's going on. So in general, we strongly recommend that transplant res uh, recipients be careful about their health, that they monitor their symptoms, that, and that they think about contacting their transplant center or their primary care physician um, whenever they have worrisome symptoms for infection. One of the most important things is to catch uh, disease early before they become very ill, and there certainly are a variety of um, tests and medications that we can give in order to uh, prevent uh, spread of disease.